turn in his drawing room. On impulse, he took the sacred bundle from his safe and sat in the armchair with it on his lap. Long he studied it, and with true reverent attention. He tapped the outer envelope of rawhide. Under it was what? Another layer. Under that another. Another beneath the third. And so on for many layers, each representing a generation or more of time. Finally, if one flouted ritual and peeled them all away, would come into view the original sacred bundle, the gift that Longspear said had come from those above. And inside that, what? Nobody knew. The gods had not told her children the ancestral teas, and no man had looked. Thunderstone took it in his arms carefully. He had seen Longspear do that. His constant yearning for knowledge of the unknown. <clears throat> His constant yearning for knowledge of the unseen and unknown was strong in him, but evidently not strong enough. He was not psychic, he thought once again. His was not the gift. His was not the gift of priesthood or prophecy. He had a sense of solemnity and no more. A long spear came in. I had lunch with you, he greeted. How about dinner with me? I see you're looking at the bundle. I didn't think you'd mind, long spear. I don't. I trust you fool with it. What do you think of it? Thunderstone shook his head. I was trying to find what to think by holding it. It should do something to me, but it doesn't. Because you're not a priest, a medicine man, but I am. That's hereditary among the T's, too. The chief is also the prophet. Shall I try for you? I'm fucking getting somebody else to do this, but anyway. Oh. Shut up. Why not? said Thunderstone, holding out the bundle. But Longspear did not take it at once. Instead, he produced from his pocket a pipe, not his usual briar, but a stubby one with a bowl of black stone. Old and pon pon Old and polished as jet. This he filled most carefully, facing around so that he looked toward the east. He lighted it. Then, without inhaling, he faced north and emitted a puff of smoke. Continuing his facing, he puffed on to west, to south, to east. Finally, he observed the two directions, with the final puffs up at the ceiling and down at the floor. Give me the bundle now, he said deeply, and take the pipe. Keep it lighted and smoking. You must sit there and be the council. Pipe and bundle changed hands. Thunderstone drew a lungful of the fragrant mixed vapors and breathed it out. Through the veil of blue fog, he saw Longspear lay the bundle in the hollow of his left arm, almost like a lyre. His right hand, with fingers slightly bent, rested upon it. The heel of the right hand became a fulcrum, and the fingers moved slowly and rhythmically. The old dry hide gave forth a scratching tempo, like that evoked by Latin American musicians from the chords. Longspear began to chant monotonously and softly. <laughs> he chanted the little hymn in his own tongue and then began slowly to turn. His feet moved and took new positions, softly as though he wore moccasins. His brown face turned upward, his eyes sought the ceiling as though they could pierce it to the sky above. Oh. Still chanting. Now it seemed to Thunderstone that the smoke began to drift and eddy, though there was no draught in the room. 
A little wreath swirled momentarily around Longsby's head, something like a halo, and a hint of other voices, soft, softer than echoes, softer even than the memory of voices long dead, became suggestible, as if they joined in the chant of the tea's chief. Raptly, Longspear sang, and prayerfully. More smoke drifted from the pipe in Thunderstone's mouth, but the room contained some sort of radiance. As if it held a lamp, as if a hand held a lamp to them, not at doors or windows, but at some opening from another place. Not easily discernible. Oh. Longspear sat down and laid the bundle on his knees. Put out the pipe, he said. What? Wait, what? Put out the pipe, he said. You've just heard a real prayer song. We have other stuff, more showman-like for tourists and scholars. Not everybody, indeed hardly anybody, as if they're of the right mind or mood to join with us in our worship. I trust you with that, too. I'm flattered, and I did get something, Longspear. I felt that your prayer, whatever it was, got an answer. All my prayers are answered. All of them. I don't mean that all are granted, but I know that they are heard, and that judgment is made on them. Just now I prayed to know what would happen to me, prayed to know what would happen to me, as a man of my people striving for their freedom and good. What I got was a warning of danger. No more. He was silent and carefully touched the bundle in his la in its lashings. The buffalo habit. The buffalo hide yeah, is old. It may crack soon. I know where a new piece of tanned buckskin may be got, and send you to sew it on securely. Keep it for me again, will you? I'll bring back the new covering and make all song snug. Could almost have been some. Then we'll have dinner, eh? Of course. Longsby laid the bundle carefully on a centre table of rubbed mahogany. Thunderstone saw him to the door and returned to the table for the bundle. He carried it to his safe, put his hand, put out his hand to open the door. At that moment, something struck him slashingly on the head behind the ear, struck him with such savage force that not even his legs, nope, that not even his big body could stand up under the blow. Down he went on his knees, with darkness rushing over him like water. He could not see, and his ears rang. Mm. And his ears rang. Somebody was trying to tug the bundle out of his hands. Thunderstorm to keep... Mm. Thunderstone fought to keep it, and another blow drove what was left of his wits clear out of him. He wakened to find himself in an armchair of wood, where he seldom sat. His ears still hummed, and his first opening of eyes filled his brain with glaring lights. He tried to get up and felt himself held back by cutting pressure at wrists and ankles. By cutting pressure yes, at wrists and ankles, and across the chest, shaking his big head to clear it, he looked down and saw that the lengths of insulated electrical wire bound that lengths of electrical what wire bound his arms to the arms of the chair, his feet to the front legs. More strands encircled his body, and one loop passed under his chin. His head ached furiously. You're all right, Mr. Thunderstone. Yeah, I'm not doing voice tonight. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, I just have a feeling the story's not that great. It's kind of hard to get into. Um, we shall get into it, nevertheless. He knew that voice. It was Barton Siddons. The gaunt man bent down, anxiously looking at him.
get me out of this, said Thunderstone. Why should I? asked Siddons airily. Mm, because airy and anxious go together. <sighs> asked Siddons airily. When I took such trouble to drag you to that chair and tie you. Thunderstone said nothing else but stared at his captor. Thunderstone said nothing else but stared at his captor. I've been in this room for more than an hour, went on Siddons, hiding behind those ha no, yep, yeah, hiding behind those hangings. Ugh. I hoped for a chance to get the bundle twice as much after. Longspear gave the bun that bun no nope, gave that heathen exhibition. He glanced towards the centre table where the bundle was lying. I'd been waiting for you to wake up. Why? demanded Thunderstone. <laughs> Why? demanded Thunderstone. He wondered how strong his bonds were, but made no exhibition of tugging and struggling. Because you shall witness its destruction. Siddons licked his lips. I intend to discredit Longspear with his people, and you with Longspear. He entrusted his treasure to you. You weren't able to keep it safe from him. From him? For him? Thunderstone again kept silent and stared. His eyes made Siddons uncomfortable. <laughs> From your own lips I heard words of respect for that savage tease beliefs, Mr. Thunderstone. I don't despair of showing you its fallacy. Watch. Siddons went to the table. Something gleamed in his hand, a knife. He slit one of the binding thongs, another and another. He pulled the ancient buffalo hide wrapping open. It came away stiffly with a dry rattle. Another layer, observed Siddons, grinning briefly at Thunderstone. Whatever is inside, those teas believe in keeping it well muffled. Another stiff layer of rawhide was peeled away. It adhered and needed force to detach it. Now for the third. Hello, what's this? Tucked in between wrappings. What indeed. He picked it up and dang... He picked it. Fuck. Mm. He picked it up, a dangling pale tassel. Human scalp, he diagnosed. White man's hair, quite fair. Wrapped in there to signalize a victory, perhaps. But there weren't enough victories. The white man won in the end. Siddons slid away another hide wrapping, another, the next broke at his touch, into irregular flakes like old paper. Old and rotten, pronounced Siddons. Now the